Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is episode 5 of the the water cycle and water insecurity unit over here on my channel. Today we're going to be looking at deficits within the hydrological cycle. If you haven't seen the rest of the episodes in this series I'll try and remember to link the playlist up here. I've also done a load of other um, units of the a-level geography specification over here on my channel so they're in the playlist section on my page go ahead find them and yeah let's just get straight on into this. Tropical droughts. Rio's taps run dry. It is difficult to believe that countries in wet tropical climates can suffer a drought. Yet the period of 2014 to 2015 witnessed the worst drought in Brazil for over 80 years. Water levels in some of the world's largest HEP schemes were, su schemes were so low that power supplies were suspended, agriculture was in crisis and urban taps ran dry. The causes of the drought. Rainfall in Brazil is normally predictable. Moist air moves in a westerly direction from the South Atlantic across the Amazon basin. When the moist air encounters with the high Andes mountain range to the west of the continent, it is forced to turn southwards, maintaining the flow of moisture around the basin. However, in 2015, a series of high pressure, high pressure systems diverted rain bearing winds further north away from the Amazon and also prevented them from diverting southwards from the Andes. Heavy rain then occurred in Bolivia and Paraguay, whilst dry air remained over Brazil. The impact of the drought. Both The Guardian and The Economist described the drought in Brazil as its worst. Its impacts led to street protests in Sao Paulo, Brazil's largest city, and included water rationing for 4 million people. Water supplies were cut off for three days a week in some towns. Halting of HEP production, which led to power cuts. The depletion of Brazil's 17 largest reservoirs, to a dangerously low level, some down to just 1% capacity. Increased groundwater abstraction, which led to aquifers becoming dangerously low, and a reduced crop of arabaca bean coffee beans. Brazil is the world's largest producer of these, which pushed up global coffee prices by 50%. Deforestation, droughts and feedback. There have been three droughts in Brazil since 2000, and links between these becoming more frequent periods of drought is becoming clearer. In 2014, climate scientists reported that deforestation in the Amazon might have now passed a tipping point. In other words, changing hydrological and climatic cycles, cycles permanently. Rainforests recycle half of their rainfall, but the positive feedback loop of deforestation and less rainfall is reducing the ability of the rainforest to regenerate. As a result of this, fragile rainforest ecosystems are less resilient. Thinning forests have reduced soil water storage and evapotranspiration. In turn, these lead to changing weather patterns with lower precipitation. There is a domino effect on feedback loops that reinforce the drying of the tropics. A few weeks ago, we looked at the importance of tropical stores in a flux. Forests regulate regional climates and generate flows of moisture across the continent. Now, the combined risk of global change, ENSO cycles, which we'll look at in a couple of weeks, and deforestation will probably alter this, so that extreme weather will become more frequent. Drought could mean the Amazon rainforest capacity to absorb carbon will decline. Regional water cycles will change and soil temperatures will increase. The Amazon rainforest will be replaced with savanna-like grasslands. More wildfires will increase the level of carbon in the atmosphere. Reduced rainfall will threaten Brazil's dependency on HEP, which generates 70% of its electricity, and the world will lose a major carbon sink and source of moisture. Human activity and drought. Brazil's 2014-15 drought was not simply meteorological. Human activity also contributed due to over-abstraction of surface water resources and groundwater aquifers, as water companies tried to maintain water supply for factories and services, and residents tried to avoid cuts in supplies. Droughts particularly affected the southeast of Brazil. In Sao Paulo state, industries, domestic users and farming increasingly used groundwater as rivers ran low. Groundwater became the only water source for the urban poor and for remote rural areas. The problem was caused by high fees charged by the Brazil government for granting a license to drill a well. In addition, drilling a well can cost between 35 and 100,000 US dollars. This cost meant that many people avoided payment and instead drilled illegal wells, which were not monitored for water safety. 
between January and October 2014, 25,000 licenses to allow drilling were made by Sao Paulo state government. However, hydrologists believe that this was only 30% of the real number, and they raised concerns about shrinking, draw shrinking groundwater levels. Illegal wells were generally shallower and less filtered by bedrock, so they contain industrial pollutants and higher levels of bacteria. The impact of drought on rainforest ecosystems. The Amazon rainforest is referred to as the Earth's lungs because it absorbs CO2 and returns oxygen to the atmosphere. Its 400 billion trees also transport humidity inland from the Atlantic Ocean. The flying river in the sky takes up 20 billion tonnes of water vapour daily from the forest and dumps it as rain on central and southern Brazil. By contrast, the Amazon River carries 17 million tonnes of water back to the Atlantic each day. Prolonged drought causes forest stress and sets up a series of chain reactions. Younger trees die, which reduces canopy, canopy cover. This in turn reduces humidity, water vapour and therefore rainfall. Exposed to tropical sunlight, drying vegetation and surface tree litter create a potential tinderbox that can easily catch fire. Lightning storms and high, and high winds frequently turn a small fire into a wildfire. Long-term drought means shorter trees and thinner canopies. The impact of drought on wetland ecosystems. The Pantanal is a large wetland area in central South America, 140,000 kilometers squared of which lie within Brazil. It lies in the upper Paraguay river basin and its aquatic and bird wildlife make it among the world's most significant freshwater ecosystems. The river's floodplain is vital. It's surrounded by areas with seasonal rainfall, which means that the aquatic and bird life there depends on permanent wetlands for survival. Seasonal rainfall floods the Pantanal between November and April. At this time, Pantanal changes it from terrestrial into aquatic habitats. Flooding generally covers 80% of the Pantanal, but even in dry years, the river is permanent. The wetlands near the river retain up to 60% of flood water throughout the year. Areas of land near the river are filled with forests, which generally changes the savanna grassland as the distance from the river increases. It is here that the 2014-2015 drought affected the Pantanal the most, testing its resilience and long-term survival. The drought increased tree mortality, which in turn reduced habitats for wild animals, as well as for cattle ranching and ecotourism. Wildfires became a major threat caused by cattle ranchers, deliberately setting old grass on fire during the dry season to clear vegetation left ungrazed by their cattle. This is their normal method of land management. However, during the drought, those deliberate fires spread easily out of control into the wetlands and the forests. And that is the end of episode five of this series. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do subscribe down below. It really helps me out. And next week we're going to be looking at surpluses within the hydrological system so you don't want to miss that please do subscribe share it with a friend share it with your teacher share it with your classmates whoever you think might find this useful and i will see you same time same place next week monday 4 30 pm bye guys